What's going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and have I got a story for you. As many of you may know, I actually went to DEF CON last week, and it was the experience of a lifetime. It literally went from being one of the greatest experiences of my entire life to being one of the worst experiences I've ever had. Now, the greatest experiences were all DEF CON. DEF CON was absolutely fantastic. The worst experiences was the journey back home. I couldn't possibly make this up. It was such a nightmare. Now, I know this is gonna be a little bit of a longer video, but stick around to the end. I promise you it's worth it. The whole trip was like a movie arc for like an aspiring content creator, going to DEF CON, meeting fans, meeting all sorts of amazing people, and then he's getting reality smashed back upon him as soon as he leaves. So put your tray tables in the upright position and get ready for the journey of a lifetime. Let's get at it. So I didn't actually get to DEF CON until later on Thursday. Uh, a lot of people just go through Line Con. It's basically where everybody stands around, gets their badges on Thursday. But I actually had somebody grab my badge already for me, so I didn't have to wait. So I was going to get there a little bit later in the day. I actually worked a half a day on Thursday. So I was up at 7 a.m. I got to work at 9. And I worked until about 2 before I left for the airport. It was kind of a crappy, rainy day. So I'm driving in the rain. It's really hard to see. But whatever. That's no big deal. I had to park on top of the uh, parking structure. So I'm all the way at the top getting rained on. Again, and whatever I'm leaving work early so it's all good still so I go through check-in and get my tickets I'm only carrying a backpack and a carry-on so I've got no check luggage so you know all of that went pretty easily so now I'm in line for TSA and I've get a ton of tech in my bags I've got my flipper zero I've got my card pewter I've got a bunch of GPIO boards for the flipper I've got a bunch of m5 stack stuff I mean I have a ton of tech in my bag I also had two full boxes just like this full of Squatch coins and the little NES cartridge keychains that I had. And I mean, on the TSA little scanner thing, these must have looked really weird. I actually made a list of every single piece of tech that I was bringing with me just in case TSA needed to have that. So yeah, I put the little list on top of my backpack and, you know, sent my stuff through the scanner. Literally, the lady's like, you can't have that piece of paper on top of your bag like that. You're just going to lose it. Just send it through the scanner. I'm like, okay, why not? I walk up to the body scanner. Person's like, ah, let's go through the metal detector. You're good. Just go. I'm standing there waiting for my bag to get pushed off to the side for the TSA person to, like, go through it and ask me questions. But goes right through meanwhile the mom that's in front of me with three kids is traveling alone and she gets her luggage picked and they're going through all of her stuff so yeah my bags made it straight through tsa nobody looked at me twice i was honestly flabbergasted so i put my shoes on put my belt on get ready and head down to the terminal so yeah i'm just waiting at the terminal it turns out my flight got delayed by i think about 30 minutes uh but we finally boarded and actually when the pilot got on he said yeah it's actually really lucky they were gonna ground us for four hours but yeah they decided to only do a 30 minute wait so i was so psyched about that got in my seat we took off it was great actually the woman next to me i gave her one of my squatch coins because we were talking a little bit and she's like oh is this like your business card so she scans the qr code and finds basically my website well then like two seconds later she actually joins my discord and starts saying hey i'm sitting next to talking sasquatch on the plane it was it was really funny turns out she was in town for like a pool competition that was going on in vegas but she was super cool and she made the flight so much better so Thank you so much for sitting next to me. But yeah, the flight down was actually awesome. It was super rainy when I left, but as soon as you got above the clouds, it was sunny again. I got to see the sun for the first time in like four days because it's been raining sir pretty much forever. It was really quite nice. I thought it was going to be a good omen for the trip ahead. And I mean, for the most part, it was. So we land and I go to catch a cab to get to the Sahara because that's where pretty much all the cool kids were staying. It was definitely pretty hot. I think it was about 104 or 106 degrees when we landed. And they're like, oh, it's a dry heat, but there was no wind. So when there's no wind and it's a dry heat, I'm still sweating bullets. Now, luckily, for the most part, most people aren't going to be outside very long in Vegas, at least when they're traveling. So it wasn't too bad. So once I made it to the hotel, I actually met up with Rabbit rabbit and fox from rabbit labs they were already chilling at the hotel so i was able to bring my bags up to their room for the time being i gave them actually the full stack of maker chips that i made for them and we head down to the bar now i'd actually be rooming with picked it mate or pim for sure now pim's a super cool guy he's out of liverpool and the dude is an absolute legend lockpick. He actually ended up winning one of the competitions at DEF CON, so yeah, super cool guy. So apparently what the kind of flipper crew had been doing was they were hanging out at Cast Bar in the Sahara. There was a little area in the back with couches and outlets, so everybody was hanging out there, getting drinks, having a good time. The first night there, I met so many people that I knew from online, it was nuts. I mean, just among them, it was Jabo Hack, uh, Bill and I used my Wi-Fi, Kittens, Rocket God, Pim, uh, Equip, Rabbit and Fox, of course, Cavitate, Dude, 
Scoob the Goober, Atomic Sack, Pooter, Polybius, and so many other people. Sorry if I forgot your names, but like, again, there were so many people I met. And yeah, we were just hanging out in the back of the bar. It was kind of just like Discord, but like in real life. So yeah, it was actually a really good time. Now we were out till about 2 a.m., which doesn't sound all that late, but since I'm from the East Coast, that was basically like 5 a.m. for me. And mind you, maybe back in the day, I would do that kind of thing all the time, but it's been a very long time since I've been up that late. So yeah, right around 2 a.m., Pim and I head back to the room and call it a night. Oh yeah, quick side note, if anybody has the video of Pim winning the tool lock picking challenge, please comment down below. We'd love to find it. So yeah, as I mentioned before, I'm on East Coast time still. So of course, 5 a.m. rolls around, I'm wide awake. Even after having probably a couple gallons of malted beverage, I was still wide awake at 5 a.m. and I'm like, all right, what am I gonna do right now? So I decided to go for a walk. Turns out, even when it's earlier in the morning, it still sucks to walk around Vegas. Also, the Sahara is like not on the main strip. The Sahara is in the middle of a construction zone. Really not a whole lot of interesting stuff going on there. There's just a bunch of dirt lots and a lot of sun. Little did I know, if I had actually walked in the other direction, I would have at least found McDonald's and gotten some breakfast. But anyway, headed back to the room, got myself cleaned up, got some breakfast at the Starbucks in the lobby, and got ready to go. Now, since most of the crew that I was hanging out with before was actually still asleep, I actually called up Kittens, who's a fellow New Englander, to give me a ride to DEF CON. Now, Kittens drives a Supra, which is a super nice car, but it's very small, and I made the mistake of putting my backpack on my lap on the ride out there. And unfortunately, I ended up actually breaking the clip off of my M5 sticks. I really wanted to have this guy on my backpack the whole time. Now, breaking clips on things that I 3D printed was a little bit of a theme for the trip. I may or may not have forgotten to change my infill settings from 15%, so some of the clips I printed weren't particularly sturdy. But whatever, it was fine. I was able to have my Flipper Zero, my Ponegachi, my Laura device all in my bag. And honestly, if I had more things on my bag, it would have gotten pretty annoying because it was already pretty annoying. So yeah, then we got to the convention and I got my badge. Now these badges are absolutely sick. Let me show you a little bit about it. Now I was actually fortunate enough to get three different badges. So I have the human badge right here that everybody got. And then Polybius hooked me up with the exhibitor badge right here in this smoked kind of black gray. And then we have the vendor badge right here in blue. Both of these are super cool. And let me show you some cool stuff we can do. Now I did actually 3D print buttons for this one because you play this just like a game. So we turn this on, here we go, cat ball, game data loaded, and then let's see, start to exit. You can actually turn the LEDs on and you can see, boom, 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 there's LEDs now, very cool. Let me adjust the exposure so we can see the screen. All right, so that's a little better. Let's see, you can go back. And basically what this thing is, is it's more or less Pokemon, but for DEF CON. You were actually walking around convention halls. What's also cool is that you can set the time. So when there's actually a speech or a presentation going on, this will actually tell you information about the presentation. It is absolutely so cool. My battery's dying, that's why the light's turned off. But yeah, this badge is so sick. And it's got another fun thing in store for it. So yeah, there's actually a secret menu after you update the firmware to do a Rick roll. So if we press this back button, we can go to Rick roll. And this thing actually has IR up top here. And if you send the thing to it, it plays. Rick Astley is never gonna give you up. I didn't even know I had a speaker until then. That's so cool. Another really cool thing you can do is actually select another game. And I've loaded up some other ROMs on here. So if I go to like Mortal Kombat, I can flash it directly on here. So this is basically just a Game Boy Color at that point. It's such a cool thing. Dun dun dun. Mortal Kombat 4. Let's go. And yeah, like it's actually Mortal Kombat 4. Like it's the real game. Very, very cool. Now, another cool party trick that you may have seen is that you can actually install Doom onto this thing and it works. It's got sound and everything. Well, like, check this out. This is wild. Go to a new game, new game. And yeah, we're playing Doom and there's actually a button in the back. Where does it work? Yeah, you can see the frame rate. This is running at 45 FPS. That's actually really freaking good for Doom, especially on a DEF CON badge. This is running on a little Raspberry Pi prototype board. Very, very cool. But yeah, running actual Doom, super cool. Now in the future, I will be doing a video on DEF CON badges because I got some really cool stuff to show you. So yeah, Kittens and I hit the convention floor and I immediately started getting recognized. Keep in mind, I have never been recognized as Talking Sasquatch before. So it was a really surreal experience for me. It was such a weird thing for me because it just kept happening. But I gotta say, everybody was so cool. Each and every person
person who came up to me, who said hi, who took a picture. You guys are absolutely great, and I couldn't ask for anything more. And yeah, if you came up to me and talked to me and you felt like I was being awkward, it's because I'm a really awkward guy. And again, I am not used to getting recognized. So yeah, we started checking out the villages, and I think the first place we went to was Aerospace. I wasn't really as focused on going to presentations because I really wanted to just go around and soak everything in. And actually, at Aerospace Village, I picked up this SAO. Now, these little SAOs come from the different villages or different creators, and it's actually, it's short for the add-on, and it plugs right into your badge. Look at that. Now we got cool little lights. It's hard to see because it's not, it's super bright in here, but yeah, this is the SAO for those guys. I actually got some really cool SAOs from Make It Hacken and a few other creators, so thank you so much for those. So yeah, we just kind of wandered around from village to village for a while, trying not to get lost. Speaking of getting lost, I actually got lost constantly. The badge actually even has a map on it when you press one of the buttons, but it was really hard to orient myself, and I mean, I was just continually getting lost trying to figure out where the heck I was going. I think it took me entirely to like the end of the second day to have any clue where I was going, but I made the best of it. Eventually, we made our way down to the merch area, and I met up with uh, MG from OMG Cable and Corbin from Hack5. They actually hooked me up with a boatload of stuff, so I'll be doing videos on all this stuff later on. Now, the Hack5 booth was pretty much the place to be. Every time I ran into somebody cool, it was at the Hack5 booth. Even the host of Threatwire ending with Ali was hanging out there, and while we were poking around the merch area, Ryan Montgomery himself, Zero Day, showed up. Now, I've talked to Ryan on Discord before a little bit here and there, but I've never actually met him in Meet Space. Like, I know he'd said he'd seen my Flipper Zero videos and stuff before, so getting to meet him and getting to talk to him was really cool. He's such a nice guy. And honestly, I'm not going to lie, when someone like Zero Day says that they've seen your work and they really like what you're doing, it's the amount of validation from that is awesome. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Actually, running into Zero Day happened a few other times. He just happened to be the same place as me a bunch of times. I actually gave him one of my Squatch coins and a keychain. He said he's going to put it on his desk so this is one of the coins they they're cool i gave them a ton of them out so yeah from there we kind of just bopped around poking through villages and trying to meet more people hit up the rf village and found nfc gandalf himself betsy it was actually pretty funny because we rolled up with like six people on his table and he's just like uh who are all these people it's pretty dark in a lot of places at defcon but finally he saw my shirt because i was wearing my talking sasquatch shirt and he's like oh, okay yeah it's the flipper crew so yeah we chatted a bit and then he pulls out his big bag of nfc goodies he's got like skylander stuff he's got all sorts of cool stuff to test i spent some time trying to find ice fan in there but i couldn't find him whatsoever i don't know if he's invisible or what it's hard to miss the guy he actually had a wi-fi temporary tattoo on his head so I shouldn't have missed him, but when we were there that time, I couldn't find him. Actually, I did end up running into Iceman a little bit later on in the day. He found me walking through the hallways, and we were talking for a bit. He wanted me to do a uh, CTF at the RF Village. I got kind of tied up, as you'll hear later, um, on Sunday, and I wasn't able to make it there. But yeah, super nice guy. Really good to meet him. But yeah, that was basically Friday, just walking around, seeing cool stuff like this robotic walking dog. The thing's pretty cool. It's got a little bit of a Jersey lean to it. And yeah, this dog was around the convention. I've seen a bunch of videos on him. So then we were hanging out in one of the maker spaces with uh, Rabbit and Fox and the rest of our crew and a dude named Viking. Viking was a pretty cool guy. He's one of the guys from the Locksmith Village, I'm pretty sure, the Lockpicking Village. And yeah, we were just hanging out. Uh, Rabbit was trying to teach us how to solder, like, correctly. And yeah, it was a good time. Now, that crew decided they wanted to go to Hot Pot for dinner. And having never had Hot Pot before and knowing it was going to be a pretty expensive dinner, I decided I'd going to hold off on it. Plus, honestly, my social media was mostly worn up at that point. Again, I'm a bit of an introvert, so meeting all that many people and talking that much all the entire day, I was feeling a little bit worn down. So like, you know what? I'll poke around here for a while and I'll head back. So yeah, I just kind of adventured around the convention center and found some like quieter corners, walked down a hallway and there's peaks from Hack 5. I think we were both kind of trying to do the same thing, find a quiet corner, just chill for a little while. So of course I blow him up and I'm like, yo, what's going on peaks? How's it going? It was cool though. He was actually telling me about how he's got a light bulb that works more or less like a Wi-Fi pineapple. So when that comes out, you better believe I'll be doing a video on it. Yeah, and through my wanderings, I ran into some more cool people. I mean, each and every one of you guys are absolutely awesome. I actually ran into someone who said, that they like to actually watch my videos with their family and they try to follow my tutorials as kind of a family bonding thing i mean that was such a cool thing to hear so yeah i eventually made my way back to the hotel watched some movies watched hackers and kind of sorted through all my stuff for the day to get ready for saturday so yeah saturday i got up around nine grabbed the shower went down to starbucks again because it was the only place in the hotel was easy to go to and anytime i saw somebody with a defcon badge i'd throw in one of my squatch coins it was
was funny though too like half the time when i give somebody a squatch cone they'd be like oh you're talking sasquatch I'm like, oh i've already subscribed to your channel so that was so cool i also realized that on friday night i had not given away anywhere near enough stuff so saturday i was determined to give away as much stuff as i could so yeah after that i decided to take the monorail to get to the convention center now the monorail is pretty cool it actually connects pretty much directly to sahara then it goes down to the north side of the convention center or something like that now it doesn't take you directly to the part of the convention center you need to be at however then it takes you to the loop the loop is wild it's free if you're going to the convention center and you ride a tesla through underground rainbow tunnels underneath vegas like yeah it sounds ridiculous but yeah i got some videos of it and it's super super cool i actually really enjoy traveling that way what's also funny is it's only about a two mile loop and you're driving a tesla well you're not driving it the driver's driving a tesla and the tesla's basically driving itself so the drivers were hilarious literally they drive two minutes at a time basically or two miles at a time in this loop over and over again and all they do is basically <laughs> talk the whole time every single time i talked to a driver they were the coolest people so if you're ever in the loop talk to the drivers they're really fun so yeah then we're just back on the convention hall floor again wandering around trying to soak everything in now one thing about defcon is that all the villages or at least most of them have their own badges which is really cool now the one badge i really wanted it was actually from the ics village it's called the whale tail now the whale tail actually hooks up to a kind of flipper zero adjacent device called the free willy now this monstrosity is the ics badge with the free willy we press the button here i believe where's the buttons it actually has its own lights and you can change the colors and stuff here it's very very cool now i'm going to be doing an entire video on this thing there's so many cool things it does but with the badge itself it actually adds a whole bunch of serial connections including can bus so this thing is surprisingly capable plus this guy right here actually comes off it's velcroed on right now but this actually can be worn as a little bit of a pit boy style watch or something so very cool piece of tech so it was right after I got the ICS badge and the Free Willy that I actually got a DM from Dead Mouse. I had noticed he actually added a show, which seemed to be relatively last minute, um, right during DEF CON on Saturday night. When I saw that he added the show, I asked him if he'd hit up DEF CON, and because it's at the convention center and not at a casino, um, I think I was actually able to go to it. So yeah, I told him I was in the merch area, and I ended up running into him. Where else? The Hack 5 booth. Now, for those of you who didn't watch all my earlier videos and stuff, I actually started talking to Dead Mouse as soon as he started posting about Flipper Zero on Instagram. I actually ended up making him a custom Wi-Fi board case, and yeah, I've kind of talked to him on and off since then. He's a super chill guy. We snagged a couple photos, and then he was asking me if I was going to go to the show later on. And I was like, well, I don't have tickets or anything. So he's like, can you get into a club? Honestly, nobody's ever asked that question before. I've never actually been to a nightclub. It's not really my scene, but... I'm like, yeah, sure, I can get in. So he's like, yeah, cool. DM me, I'll put you on the list. Now I'm on Dead Mouse's list for Zauk or Zook or however you pronounce that nightclub. Now again, I haven't really been to a nightclub at all, so I had to look up the dress code and make sure I could actually get in. I had to go out and get some pants because I didn't even carry pants because, I mean, it's the desert. Why am I not wearing shorts in the desert? Luckily, I was still wandering around with kittens who had a car, so she said that she'd bring me to Walmart and I could go get some pants. So yeah, after we met up with Dead Mouse, we continued to adventure on. I finally ended up running into Make It Hacken and Derek Jameson, or AKA Code All Night, two guys I really wanted to meet up with at DEF CON. And yeah, Make It Hacken hooked me up with some more SAOs, which I still need to put together, but they are really cool. Then we headed down to the lock picking village and started playing around with some locks. We met up with one of the guys named Red down there and we started playing around with some locks. I used to kind of dabble in lock picking and, you know, play around a little bit. So I'm like, cool, let's see what I can do. Now I'll admit, I'm definitely a bit rusty, so, you know, I fiddled around with it for a while. I wasn't able to get the lock open, but, you know, it's whatever. I had a good time anyway. And when I say that everybody at DEF CON was super cool, Red actually messaged me later on that night, being like, oh, that lock was kind of banged up. The picks weren't really good. You could have spent more time. Everybody was so nice. Everybody was so cool. Like, that's really what made the trip. Like, I have literally never felt so accepted by a community my entire life and i've been to a bunch of conventions and stuff in my actual real life so meeting all you guys and talking to people even people who didn't know who i was or know anything about flipper zero everybody was so cool so after hanging out and lock picking for a while one of our buddies pooter was actually putting on a presentation upstairs on floor three i think his presentation was actually called clap and cheeks it was a guide to you know making your own amateur radio antennas it was actually a really good presentation because i've just gotten a bunch of sdr stuff so making antennas is right up there on my list of things to do 
And if you ever really read into radio antennas, there is a lot to learn about it. So this was super low level. It was really easy to follow. I honestly, genuinely appreciated the entire time. So yeah, after that, we hit up the Peppermill restaurant, which was right down the road. We did walk there. It was so freaking hot. So yeah, that was a whole thing. I actually forgot to mention the day before I had actually gotten food at the food court. And my God, pure sadness that burger was. It was 20 bucks for literally like an institutional middle school burger burger it was terrible so yeah walking through the heat to get to an actual diner worth it now the pepper mill restaurant was kind of cool it had kind of a vintage like i don't know 60s or 50s or something it was like neon with sunken a uh, little fire pit it was fun it was a cool little place it was also fun because uh pim came with us and again he's from liverpool so he's like get the most american thing we can for you so i think we just got him like a bacon cheeseburger with i'm not sure it was barbecue sauce or something but either way he thoroughly enjoyed it so yeah at the diner it was me jaybo kittens pim and actually pooter showed up a little bit towards the end and since i had a plus three to dead mouse and unfortunately jaybo was under age i invited pooter and pim and kittens out to the show so after dinner kittens and i headed down to walmart to pick up you know a pair of jeans and maybe a shirt after digging through all the racks finding pants that actually fit me and i grabbed a shirt just off a pile and checked out headed back to the hotel in classic sasquatch fashion i managed to grab a long sleeve shirt which i'm never gonna wear a long sleeve shirt i hate long sleeve shirts so i'm out there scrambling trying to find a shirt i run down to the gift shop luckily sahara had a shirt that was pretty much like navy with like dark text on it so i'm like all right cool this will work I wanted to wear my Dolly Parton shirt, but I didn't think I'd make it past the dress code. However, I realized later on, because I was on the artist list, I could have worn pretty much anything. So we were all going to pregame at the Illuminati party, pretty much one of the bigger parties at DEF CON after hours. Now, Pim and I were kind of trying to rush out of there to get to the party. We actually forgot our badges initially, so we had to run all the way back to the room, grab our badges, then run back to the uh, the monorail to get to the party. Now, in the rush, Pim couldn't find his passport because that was his ID. But I mean, he's another bearded guy like me. He does not look like he's under 21, so we figured won't be a problem. So yeah, we head down to the Illuminati party. It's packed. There's tons and tons of people there. It was a pretty good time. Met up with most of our crew, took some pictures and hung out for a little while. So after about an hour at the Illuminati party, we hopped in a cab and went down to Resort World because that's where the club was. So it was actually super convenient that Kittens was one of my plus three because she really knows how to get around, especially in Vegas. We went up to the bouncers and I'm like, hey, I'm on the VIP list. And she's like, no, no, you're on the artist list. And honestly, the bouncer just kind of looked at me and they're like, uh, what are you what are you talking about? They literally were just staring at me. I had to break out my phone and show them the DMs from Dead Mouse for them to even check to see if I was on the list. But eventually, reluctantly, they let us in, they found it on the, the artist list, and we were in. So all we had to do was present ID and go through security. Now, as we said before, Pim didn't have his ID. I felt so bad that he couldn't get in, but actually turns out he had a great time that night. So again, I still feel really bad about it, but at least he had a good time. So Pim's, you know, heading back to the venue and we're just trying to get through security. However, we have our DEF CON badges and this is Resort World. For those of you who didn't hear, Resort World was the hotel that was actually going around to different rooms and confiscating things like breadboards, flippers, zeros, soldering irons, literally the most innocuous stuff in the world they were confiscating. So yeah, when they saw our DEF CON badges, they were not thrill turns out they wouldn't even let dead mouse's crew in with badges so nobody had badges now lucky for us pim was still in the building so we were able to give him his badges he got to wear four death Con badges around all day or all night and we finally got in now i've never really been to a nightclub before but if this is what nightclubs are all about, hey, I'm all aboard for it. They sat us at a table behind the DJ stand. And in the beginning, because it was one of the first openers, we were the only person back there with a huge spread of pretty much everything you want. Now, Kittens is a badass, and she actually gets to do stuff like this relatively frequently. Me and Pooter are sitting here like, holy crap, this is brand new never seen this before so yeah we're just hanging out having a good time the first dj that was on they didn't really give him too much to work with they didn't even have lighting or anything for him but after a little while there was another dj on the second opener was actually Callie Reef. Look her up on Spotify. She was awesome. But yeah, they actually gave her some light show and some other stuff. It was it was a blast. So probably around one o'clock or so, uh, one of the techs come out carrying Dead Mouse's head. And he's got it placed down right behind the DJ booth. And yeah, then a bunch of people in Dead Mouse's crew show up. And actually, some of the people from his crew actually knew who I was from Flipper Zero stuff. So again, 
getting recognized like that is so surreal to me. So what a cool thing. So yeah, then Dead Mouse comes out, says hi, and he's just going around. He's up on the DJ booth fiddling with knobs while Callie's still on. It was fun. Dead Mouse's set was absolutely awesome. They have all these like really cool lighting. They had these screens on top of the ceiling that were moving around and stuff. There's a huge screen behind us playing all these animations and stuff. It was an absolute blast. Plus we've got like free beverages there. I mean, we're having a good old time. Another really cool thing that you don't really think about is because we were on the stage and not like in the audience, we were mostly hearing the monitor. So it actually wasn't that loud. We'd actually all brought earplugs because again, when you're our age and you're, you know, you don't want to lose your hearing once you're almost 40 at a dead mouse show. So we were concerned, but man, it was awesome. When I left later on, I could hear perfectly as soon as I walked out of there. Honestly, I was having such a good time. I had no idea what time it was. Turns out I actually got back to my room at like 5.30 a.m. I had no clue it was that late. Now my flight was at about 2 p.m. So I didn't really have much time to go back to DEF CON for the closing ceremonies, but I figured, you know, I got up around 9 a.m. I got some breakfast and I'm like, all right, cool. Let's just relax until I have to go back to the airport. So yeah, I get down to the airport, cruise through TSA again. Again, nobody batted an eye. Cool. I guess no one cares about any of the stuff I'm bringing through there. I mean, obviously it's all completely legal, FCC compliant, everything. But again, every time I walk through the uh, TSA carrying all my stuff, I'm always a little nervous. Now comes one of the most ridiculous situations I've ever been in in my entire life. Now, if you don't want to hear about the entire ordeal of getting home from DEF CON, just go to whatever timestamps down here, and that'll get you to the end of the video to the conclusion. So I have a 2 p.m. flight that's going to go from Vegas to Charlotte, and then from Charlotte home. Now, when I finally made it to the terminal, there's some guy actually up at the gate having a relatively large, loud conversation. Well, argument with the person that's working there. Now, I have no idea what the argument was about, but they did end up bringing the cops and TSA and Homeland Security down there to escort him away. Now, if that guy did not end up getting arrested and he was just maybe escorted off the premises, that guy was the luckiest guy on that flight. So initially our flight was delayed about 15 minutes or something. I'm not sure if they told us why or not. And then right when we started to board, they're like, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. We want to wait like 10 more minutes because the airplane's really hot. I mean, it's sitting on the tarmac in Vegas, 104 degree heat. Now I want to point out, because this is important, it had been like 104 to 106 degrees every single day we were at DEF CON for the entire week before we were in DEF CON and the entire week after we were at DEF CON. No big surprise, it's hot in Vegas. So like 10, 15 minutes later, we board the plane, we all get to our seats and yeah, we're waiting to go. So we wait. 10 minutes goes by, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. We're just sitting there, not even moving from the gate. We're just sitting there. Eventually, the pilot comes over the loudspeaker and says, uh, because it's 104 degrees outside and we're at capacity, we're about 10,000 pounds overweight for takeoff. That's 10,000 pounds. I mean, they knew how many people were on the flight because it was at capacity and they knew what temperature it was because it's been that temperature for days and days. How did they not know we were going to be overweight for takeoff? Now, this story gets more and more ridiculous, so hang on tight. So the pilot comes on, says we're overweight, and the only thing that he can think of is calling up the fuel company that fuels the planes to get a special truck out there to pull fuel off the plane. So they got to pull 10,000 pounds of fuel off this plane. So we're sitting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. After about 30 minutes or so, pilot comes back on and says, yep, we're uh, still waiting to hear back from the fuel company about this truck now keep in mind 104 degrees on the tarmac we're sitting in this little tiny tube with almost no ventilation it is hot eventually they go around and give little tiny cups of ice water to all of us but i mean that's really not cutting it people are starting to get real cranky one lady starts having a panic attack it's not good pilot comes back on the radio and says okay okay we talked to the uh the fuel company and they've got the truck out it's deployed it's coming out here but there's a traffic jam i mean it's got to be damn near an hour probably longer than that it's really hard to keep track of all the timestamps and stuff but it was a long time and yeah again stuck in traffic we're still waiting so probably another 30 minutes goes by and they're like okay cool the truck is here however it can't pull fuel off the plane because the plane is deformed because all of the people are on the plane so we have to deplane we have to get off the plane in order for them to pull fuel off the plane now 
I don't know if they thought this was going to be a quick process because in reality, this took over three hours to get the fuel off the plane. They're even out there running the jet to burn fuel off of this plane. Meanwhile, they're coming over the radio every once in a while, being like, we're still working on this. We're still working on this. No ETAs, no idea what's going on. Luckily, I decided to just risk it, go run and grab some food because I hadn't really eaten much that day. That was a very good idea because I wouldn't eat for the better part of a day after this. So it seemed like forever they finally boarded us again we're like all right all right let's go let's get this trip on the road let's get out of here so we sit down and we wait like 15 minutes and the pilot gets on and says oh so because we pulled 10,000 gallons of fuel or 10,000 pounds of fuel off the plane we're now gonna have to stop in Tulsa Oklahoma to refuel so we can make it to Charlotte it's like whatever everybody's already pissed we're, as long as we're moving towards where we're going people are like that's progress right wrong so this time, at least they taxied us backwards, but we're all still just sitting on the plane for what seems like forever. To add kind of to the entire stress of the thing, there is a guy up in the plane who is a little bit sauced up to get ready for his flight. Now he's over there making jokes and stuff. I don't know if you're trying to like, you know, be funny to lighten the mood, but he was not reading the room. People were definitely pissed. And the woman before that was having a panic attack, having another panic attack. Meanwhile, anytime we move the plane forward, it's making this crazy noise. Like, I don't know what exactly was going on, but it was like for like 20 minutes straight. All the while, we're really not moving and we're not hearing anything from the pilot. We are sat on that plane in 104 degrees in Vegas for another full hour before we hear anything from the pilot. Pilot comes on, he says, uh, so they've grounded the entire airstrip for the past hour. Um, we're only now just gonna start taking off, but we're number 10 in queue and it's gonna be a while before we get to take off. People started getting super pissed. They're getting up, they're yelling, they're swearing. This is one of those situations where if I had my phone out, was recording this whole thing, that would have been viral. It would have been all over the news stations. I mean, this was, this was bad. So, and the only bit of good news is after about 20 minutes or so, pilot comes back on and says, all right, air traffic has been really doing a good job. They've been getting planes off. We're queued number three. So we're getting close. Another like five minutes go by and the plane starts starts moving and the plane starts making that noise again. I feel like I'm like everybody else on the plane. Part of me is like, man, I really hope this noise isn't going to be an issue. I really hope it's not going to cause us to have more delays or anything like that. Other half of me is being like, I don't care. Let's go full send. So we get to the runway and start to take off and crazy noise kind of goes away. I think it might've had something to do with the landing gear. I don't know, but we're in the air. Fantastic. So we're in the air for about an hour. Then the pilot comes on and said, hey, because uh, we were grounded for so long, we're now gonna be landing past midnight in Tulsa and they don't pump gas in Tulsa after midnight. So now we're going to Dallas. Like seriously, before they even took off, they must have known there's no way we could have made it to Tulsa because it takes too long to get there. They knew we were gonna be there after midnight, but whatever, I don't care. We're going somewhere. I'd rather be in Dallas than Vegas. At least it's marginally closer to where I need to be. So I wanna say it's like a two and a half, three hour flight to Dallas. I can't even tell time anymore. I've been through different time zones. I'm all over the place. I have no clue what's going on, but we land in Dallas. Now we're sitting on the plane for about half an hour, expecting that we're getting refueled and ready to go. Well. The pilot comes on again and says, because we were on the airstrip waiting to take off for so long, the flight crew timed out. He's saying that he's on the line with another flight crew trying to get someone else to fly this plane. 20 minutes later goes by, we're gonna have to deplane. There's no one to fly. So we all get off the plane, we're all super grumpy, and they say, just stay in the terminal. We have an announcement to make once everybody's deplaying. Now I'm pretty sure it's like one o'clock, 1.30 in the morning in Dallas at this time. Everybody's off the plane and then they have an announcement for us. Well, the announcement is that this flight is now taking off at 5 a.m. with a boarding time of 4.30 a.m. However, they're gonna give us a food voucher and a hotel voucher for the trouble. They also say that we can go to like the customer service uh, terminal, which I think is terminal 24, 23, doesn't matter, but we can go there and reschedule our flight, find another flight, do something like that. So me and about 120 other people head over there and get in line. Now, again, it's like 1.30 in the morning. So there's one person there and they're on the phone and they look panicked. They were definitely calling for reinforcements immediately because yeah, eventually more people showed up and the line kind of started moving. However, in the meantime, pilot or somebody comes back on the loudspeaker oh yeah because it's so late there's actually no time to get a hotel because we're taking off in like two and a half three hours and because it's so late there's no one in the airport that actually takes these meal vouchers so yeah 
you're screwed. Everybody's pissed off. Insult to injury, absolutely everything could go wrong. Now, the one saving grace is that some absolute legend came up through the line. He's like, yo, if you call up the American Airlines phone line, you can skip this whole line. You'll get everything figured out way faster. So I'm like, all right, cool. He also throws me this fun little trick, which is like, yeah, if you get the um, electronic operator, just say Beetlejuice three times and you'll get right through. I had never heard that before, but yeah, I call up the phone line. They're like, hi, how may we help you? Beetlejuice. I'm sorry, what was that? Beetlejuice. Can you repeat that one more time? Beetlejuice. We'll send you over to an operator now. Success! So yeah, I talked to customer service and I actually got a flight to um, Chicago instead of Charlotte because it didn't really matter. And that was my connecting flight. They were actually super cool, but they told me that because I booked my flight through Expedia or Priceline or something, it's going to take a little while before I get the confirmation email that I need in order to get my tickets. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm here until I mean 4.30 when I board and it's like two o'clock or something like that. I literally can't remember. So I wander around the airport and, you know, see what's going on. Now, obviously this is Dallas airport in the middle of the night. There's nobody here but i found a 7-eleven there and the 7-eleven was like the oasis of that airport so one cool thing about 7-elevens in airports is that they're more or less just a normal 7-eleven so i was able to get a big gulp there for a dollar 99 when you've been paying like 4.99 for a little like 12 ounce bottle of water all week a two dollar big gulp was like the greatest thing that had ever happened to me yeah, I know I should be drinking water and stuff at this point, but a Coca-Cola with the good ice, it was nice and cold. I mean, it really made me feel at least a little better throughout this whole ordeal. So I'm out here rubbing on my phone, using the free Wi-Fi, just trying to burn time, but I'm noticing I'm not getting any emails about this flight. So I decided to head back to the customer service terminal because, I mean, what else am I doing? I'm not sleeping because I didn't really want to risk missing my flight because I'm asleep or something like that. So I've got nothing to do, so I'm like, screw it, whatever. I'll go back to customer service. Now, at this point, there's probably only like a dozen people in line, so we're waiting. No big deal. I don't care. So I get up to the person there. I talk to them, give them my ID, get my tickets. All right, cool. We're good. I start heading on over to my terminal, and they have uh, trains or monorails or whatever to get you from terminal to terminal. Dallas Airport is huge. So one of the trains was offline because they were doing service on it, but... Basically, I had to take the train the wrong direction. It was about 20 minutes, actually, to get to my terminal. But again, I got nothing else to do. So whatever. I'm riding a train. It's all good. So I finally get to my terminal. I'm hanging out there, just chilling, basically. And I noticed that I really only have what looks like to be about 20 minutes from my flight to Chicago to my flight home. No big deal, though. So I'm basically waiting there, watching the screen, making sure nothing's delayed. I'm waiting there hours and hours. And finally, it just about comes to be time for boarding no delays so now it's time to board group one gets on the plane awesome we're ready to go i'm group five but whatever i mean this is how these things work it shouldn't be very long now dude comes walking off the plane talks to the person at the terminal person at the terminal comes on the radio and says um due to some unforeseen things the plane needs some maintenance before we can board the rest of you guys my heart sunk i mean i had maybe 15, 20 minutes to get from my flight to my other flight, there's no way I'm gonna be able to make my connecting flight. But whatever, it is what it is, I'll figure it out. As long as I'm in Chicago, at least I'm a little closer to where I need to be. Five minutes later, group two is allowed to get on, then group three, group four, group five, we all get on the plane. We only lost about 10 minutes. Everything else goes smoothly. And what's even better is when I booked my flight, the person asked me if I wanted an aisle or a window seat. So I asked for an aisle seat because I had a little bit more room. But what they actually did was they put me somewhere where I actually didn't have anybody sitting next to me either. So I actually had some space on this flight. But yeah, this flight goes off without a hitch. And as soon as I hit the ground, I hop onto the American Airlines app because they have maps. And it turns out I'm only about four minute walk from where I need to go. I also decided that I'm gonna live dangerously and hit the bathroom real quick before I board this next plane. So, you know, hopefully everything goes well. So I get to the gate where my flight is with four minutes before boarding, which was actually kind of cool because like I was in and out of Chicago, like lickety split. And then for that last flight, again, I had the aisle seat, nobody sitting next to me. So the person that was on the phone that hooked me up with that, thank you so much. That really helped after how bad this trip has been. So yeah, the flight went off without a hitch. I landed at home, found my car on top of the parking garage and headed home. So I finally make it back to my house at about noon Eastern time and I had left about noon Pacific time. So that's like a 21 hour journey. Now, honestly, I'm exhausted, but what do you do in that situation? I had to get up and go to work the next day. So basically I, I'm like, I gotta stay up for the rest of the day. If I go to bed now, I'm gonna wake up at like 3 a.m. and I'm gonna completely screw up my entire sleep schedule. So I stayed up, but yeah, I ended up staying up till about 8 p.m. and slept for like 13 hours or something like that and headed to work the next day. 
The wild part is though, the entire trip back, no matter how bad it was, no matter how long we were stuck on that plane, I'm always sitting in the back of my head being like, it was worth it. No matter how bad it was on the trip back, as long as I made it back, it would still be worth it. I mean, obviously getting to meet Dead Mouse and going to that show was amazing, but what really made it worth it was each and every one of you guys that said hi to me. Actually, it was each and every person that I talked to there, even if they didn't know who I was or anything like that, everybody was so cool. Getting to meet all of this giant community was absolutely amazing. If I'm being honest, I've been in a little bit of a slump recently. It's hard producing one video a week, every single week over and over again. It's hard trying to keep up a level of content, a level of, you know, expectation for you guys. But seeing all you guys out there, seeing people talking about how much they like watching my content and things like that, it really made me want to work harder. I mean, I spent at least an hour or two every single day after work working on the script for this video, and I'm trying my hardest to get this thing out on Sunday as a feature one week after DEF CON. And yeah, I'm sure there are things that happened at DEF CON that I forgot to mention, but I try to compress everything down to keep it kind of succinct and short and as easy to comprehend as possible, because yeah, it was a crazy weekend. And I do want to say to each and every one of you that's still watching this video, I know it's a crazy long video, so if you're still here, I genuinely appreciate you. It gets me a little choked up, but honestly, DEF CON was like a life-changing experience. Meeting the community, meeting so many of you, it really made me want to do better for all of you. So anyway, let's check out the DEF CON haul. Let's check out some of the cool stuff I picked up from you guys out at DEF CON. Okay, so this is just some of the stuff I got. One of the cool things I had were these cards. They're kind of like magic cards, but for a bunch of the different stuff at DEF CON. So there's so much lore here. These things are so cool. I only got one pack of these. There are hundreds and hundreds of these cards. So very, very cool if you have more of those. There's a whole thing you're supposed to do. I've tagged them on Twitter and stuff. But yeah, if you have these cards, definitely look them up. There's something to do with a black badge. Then we've got some cool stuff. Like I've got pins from Fox. I've got coin from Rocket God. I've got another pin that's on my badge from Rocket God. We've got coins from a bunch of different people. I think this one's from Blue Team Village. So that's really cool. This sticker right here was actually designed by Elif. She's one of the uh, winners of the social engineering contest. We've got a, uh, a NFC tag or RFID tag. I can't remember which one from Rabbit Labs. Another RFID tag stickers that people were like literally brought to DEF CON for me. These little ducks were really cool. So these guys actually have QR codes on the bottom. And when you scanned them, it would take you to Waddle Army. It was a website. And the more people scan these things, uh, the more they populated a picture on the website. That was super cool. Then Polybius actually set me up with some of these. These are DEF CON goon coins. These are actually coins that the goons would, you know, trade amongst themselves or turn in in order to buy things from concessions and stuff. These are really cool. Nobody gets these except the goons. That's cool. We've also got ourselves a genuine butt coin. These are not very uh, common, so very, very cool there. Um, and then we got the city of Oswego, what if I can't pronounce that, but drone and robotics unit. Very, very cool. Also got a bunch of these clear NFC tags. So I'll be messing around with these at some point in time as well. Now I've got an absolute ton of other stuff at well, and maybe I'll show some of that off in a later video, but I know this one's gotten really long. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna catch you next time.